Hi guys, welcome back. So today I'm going to be showing you how to make this pistachio cake. Let's begin. To get started on the recipe, you'll want to grab yourself a large mixing bowl, and into your mixing bowl place your butter, which is at room temperature, followed by the granulated sugar, and beat the two together until they are lighter and fluffier. For me, this usually takes around seven to 10 minutes, but it all depends on how humid it is where you are. The warmer you are, the quicker it will take, but it'll still take a minimum of five to seven. Once your butter and sugar is lighter and fluffier, you can then go ahead and add in your eggs, gradually one at a time, beating well in between each dish, and being careful not to scramble the mixture. You can then go ahead and add in your vanilla extract, followed by your almond extract, and mix until they are fully incorporated into the mixture. Then don't forget to add in your pistachio paste, just keep the mixer spinning and just add it in and it'll work its way in. But then you'll want to give the bowl a good scraping down, and this is just to incorporate any bits that may not have been fully worked in from earlier on, as you can tell from the top and sometimes at the very bottom of the bowl, that's where it usually catches. But once you've done that, you can then add in your dry ingredients, pass them through a sieve if you want, but mine was fine. Mix on a low speed to start with, working up to a medium high speed, and once you have a clear batter, you can then go ahead and stop mixing and just give the bowl another good scraping down. And again, this is just to incorporate any bits of dry ingredients that may not have been fully worked in from earlier on. Now you can take your cake batter and divide it between your two cake tins which have been lined with parchment paper then go ahead and just smooth and level out the batter as best as you possibly can this will help with the consistency of baking once they're in the oven you can then go ahead and place these into the oven and bake them off i will leave all that information in the blog post which will be linked down below so don't forget to check it out if you're interested So while your cakes are in the oven baking, you can go ahead and make your cream cheese icing. Simply take a bowl and place in your butter and icing sugar and beat together until they are lighter and fluffier, looking a little something like this. Once you've achieved this consistency, you can then go ahead and add in your pistachio paste while the mixer is still turning as it will work it in as best as possible. Just keep mixing until it's fully incorporated. You won't be able to fully incorporate it at the top and the bottom, but that's why we can scrape the bowl down later on. Then add in your vanilla extract followed by your almond extract and just mix those in until they are fully incorporated. Then gradually, bit by bit, start adding in your soft cheese, which is at room temperature. If you use cold cream cheese, it will literally leave chunks of unincorporated soft cheese into your mixture, which is not ideal. So a small amount of room temperature soft cheese at a time will work really well. Once you've got all of the soft cheese added, just whisk on a very high speed, the highest your mixer can do for around a minute or two, and you should notice that it thickens up and looks like this. This is the perfect consistency, it's spreadable and ready to use. And so here are what the sponge cakes look like. Once they are baked, they've got this lovely green colour. To start the assembly of the cake, take your plate, board or stand and pipe a small amount of buttercream into the centre of it, placing your first layer of cake on, pressing it down to secure it in place. Then around the outer edge, pipe a ring of icing and just do the same until you have covered the top of the cake not with a fit super thick layer but then smooth and level it off as best as you possibly can this will help with keeping it all consistent and level then place on your second layer of cake and just press it down then not too firm then pipe around the outer edge of the cake and on top it will look rough at first but don't worry this is completely normal and absolutely fine you're not looking for it to be perfect at this stage but once you've got most of the icing around the outside of the cake and on top you can then smooth off the top as much or as little as you want. You don't have to go completely smooth and looking perfect. You can leave it looking quite rustic. It's completely up to you. But you can do as much or as little decoration as you like. So I just smooth the top off, smooth the sides, and then use a, the same little offset palette knife to create a little, you know, little crevice or kind of swirl on top of the cake. You don't have to smooth your cake off as much as this if you don't want to, or if you don't have the tools. It's really up to you. You can keep it as professional or as rustic as you'd like.
So around the bottom edge of the cake, I just take some of the roughly chopped pistachios and just create a border. This helps to break up the colour of the cake, although the colour is nice. Adding that pop of pistachio green really works really well and it adds more colour, texture and flavour. Then around the top outer edge, I just pipe on my rosettes. Again, you can pipe more or less depending on how many portions you want from this cake. But trust me, it's really up to you, so I'm just follow me as a guideline, but do what you need to. Don't forget to top the rosette with some more of those roughly chopped pistachios, and this will just be the finishing touch for the cake. And here is the finished cake. So once the cake is ahead around half an hour to 40 minutes in the fridge, you can then go ahead and start to cut it up into as many or as few portions as you would like. I'm just cutting a piece here to show you what the inside looks like. So you have the two layers of cake, the layer of icing in the middle and the icing on the outside. It's the perfect cake. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe for more from me. And I'll be back again soon with another recipe to join me then. In the meanwhile, don't forget to check out the description. I'll be linked to this recipe, a link to my blog and links to all my social medias. So check them out. But that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed. Bye guys.